for the Daily Mail covering snooker and football and I used to be here every year. For the whole 17 days, you live and breathe it, you eat it, you sleep it. It's the greatest sporting experience. There was always something special about this place. You looked forward to it. And I know all the other guys in the press room were the same as well. There's nothing to beat it. People who cover snooker are very lucky because there are no barriers put up, which we might find in other sports. There are no people saying, no, you can't talk to him. I could literally go anywhere I liked and nobody would stop me. And so you get to know everyone. There's a great kind of... Uh, family feel to the whole thing. You are at a big sporting event and yet somehow it's not that kind of a, it's not like being at Wembley but certainly snooker is a class apart. I've seen some great wins and I've seen some lovely occasions but when Ronnie O'Sullivan made his 147 in 5 minutes 20 seconds. 73 Think of that, five minutes, 20 seconds. We were caught on the hop a little bit because we were all up in the press room watching it on monitors and there were two reds left and we all looked at each other and sort of made a, a bit of a trot stroke dash for the door. So we could see the finale of this fabulous, fabulous clearance. And by the time we actually got there, it was already on the colours. We were only about 50 yards away. 134. It was just astonishing, and of course, that will never happen again. No player, including Ronnie, would ever be able to do that again. Magical was the word for it. So of course, you're straight out to the office on the blower. A, a landline, by the way. No cell phones, landline. You'll never believe what's happened. And uh, they clear the back page for you. I could say I've probably spent the best years of my sporting life watching snooker. <laughs> and, and, and so, you, you're loath to let go of that really because it's a nice feeling just to come back even for a couple of days and just to see people and, um, and relive golden memories I suppose. Why do I come to the Crucible? You get to know the same people in the front three rows. It's nice to meet them year after year. I just love the place. I'll never stop coming here, as long as I'm breathing. There's a good core of us that have been coming for donkey's years, and we all get together. Some of us don't see each other for 12 months or more, but when we meet up again, it's like it was yesterday. Just the best 17 days of the year. Started coming with mum and dad, and they're still coming. It's one of the highlights of the year for me. And if you love snooker, it's, it's a fantastic place to come. Every time we come here we make new friends and the Snooker family get bigger and bigger. It's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm Kelly, I'm 37, I'm from Stoke and this is my 21st year at the Crucible. As a lifelong Hendry fan, I think his 147 in 2012 was emotional. I really felt it, it was special. Well, you couldn't have him set much better than this. There's a little buzz goes around the whole audience when they realise the maximum's on. And you look around and, and everybody is like, you can see people muttering, oh, he's going to do it, he's going to do it. And yeah, it was a great, great day. Absolutely fantastic. There's only one Stephen Henry. Well done, Stephen. You've done the game proud once again. A few days later when he announced his retirement, I met him and had a photo with him. And I don't know why, but I just said, I love you. <laughs> um, he, he smiled, but he didn't say it back. <laughs> I'm Keith Walker, I'm 69 years old, and I've been coming to the Crucible for 40 years this year. My favourite player is Steve Davis. 
is just an ambassador for the sport. He's a real gentleman. I think he's brilliant. It was a sad day for me when Steve announced his retirement in the Crucible. When he came out with that trophy. It was very emotional for Steve and it was also emotional for me as well. I remember Rob Walker gave him a big hug, you know. I wanted to do that myself actually. John Airy, I've been coming since 1981 when I was a 13-year-old kid. Dennis winning. We didn't have a season ticket then. I queued up and I got the last ticket. At the time, I was a passionate Dennis supporter, more because it, well, I was in the anyone but Davies camp. No. It's a shameful position to hold because he was he was a fantastic player. And looking back, I probably wish the other man had won. I don't think that'll ever be surpassed, that final, just in terms of sheer drama and excitement. He's done it! I'm Brian Wright, coming here since 1989. I'm probably known as Covetop Brian. Pride of the Midlands, the Coventry City fan, Brian Wright. 2012, Olympic year. My gold medal race was uh, to ask Lisa to marry me. Lisa, I want to share the rest of my life with you. You're amazing. <laughs> You're truly beautiful. You're my best friend. You're my soulmate. And I love you with all my heart. Lisa, will you marry me? Frankly, she said yes. Brian, do the business. <laughs> it must have been what like Henry felt when he won his seventh, or what Davis felt when he won his first, or you know that feeling, that elation of having success on the crucible floor. Ladies and gentlemen, the bride and groom to be. <laughs> Keep getting asked when you're getting married. Six years on, they still haven't got married because he's spending all his cash watching world-class snooker. August 25th, 2019, here at the Crucible Theatre. About blooming time, mate. Only took you six years. There's nothing better than being in the Crucible Theatre when something magical happens. I go to a lot of the snooker tournaments. I'd give up them all just to come to the Crucible every year. I really would. I'll never stop coming here, as I say. It's a place that makes you want to come back time and time again. I think it's probably the most special place I've ever been to in terms of sport. I can't imagine I'll ever stop. When this is over, next month's payday, start saving up again for next year. That painting of Rob Walker, he looks so radiant, doesn't he? Well, uh, I am with Brian Smith now, the very talented Sheffield artist behind all of this wonderful artwork. And uh, Brian, there is a lot of history on this wall right here. I see, but yes, this is a, a series of composite sketches that kind of celebrates uh, moments at the Crucible uh, in the past that are familiar to aficionados of snooker all over the world. The, the top one is Alex Higgins winning in 1982, bringing his daughter on stage when his emotions got the uh, better of him at the uh, ceremony. This is Dennis wagging his finger at loser Steve Davies, or loser on the night Steve Davies, um, which is a scene that kept us all awake into the early hours of the morning, like back in 1985. And this one is Ronnie, the fastest 147 at the Crucible in five minutes 20. There's a whole series of scenes there that are familiar to those who follow the game, uh, the way the various celebrations that Ronnie used, raising his glass, pointing his cue, um, either signing a cheque or an autograph, we're not sure which, they're all in there. And this briefly is just uh, the interior of the arena, which I painted live in, 19, in 2016, rather, before the final between Selby and Junhui, uh, which formed uh, part of the opening credits for the BBC's coverage back in 2016.
Wow. So he's already famous, not just in Sheffield, but on telly as well. Um, and also you've uh, got some portraits of uh, m most of our, six of our quarter finalists here. What is the key to a successful portrait of a snooker player? Well, to be honest, the, the eyes have it. It's about trying to get uh, a view and a reference which has got the intensity which is common to players at this level. They have a sense of focus because they're playing against themselves. There's nobody else immediately on the other side of a net or whatever. They, they remain in t very intense and focused and it's all in the eyes. And if you can get that right, then you get the character of the person. OK, so who is left on the list that you'd like to sketch? Well, one that occurs to me that's not here is Steve Davis, so I wouldn't mind a pot at him if he's interested. If you'd like to come and sit, I'll, uh, I'll dash one out. Well, there you go. Steve, a question for you. You know where to come get yourself down here. <laughs> well, there you go. Yeah, there's an possibly. invitation, yeah. Well, it is, but, of course, now I'm a DJ. I mean, I've got time to sit still for a minute anymore. Hey, wait a minute. Well, you could sit a la still life with a palm leaf strategically placed like you had in the jungle a few years ago. Strategically placed. Strategically <laughs> placed, as I recall. Don't go there. <laughs> let's not go there. Was... Let's go back to this quarter. Well, as you well know, Sheffield has been taken over by all things snooker, and I'm in the Winter Garden about to meet four very special guests. Now, I would introduce you to them, but I know somebody that could do a far better job. Rob, it's over to you. Testing their world-famous hand-eye ball coordination, four of Wednesday's finest. Here comes Morgan Cunning Fox, Jacob No Butterfingers Butterfield, Joe Wild Thing, Wild Smith, and finally, the huge towering presence of Cameron Dangerous Dawson. Sheffield Wednesday goalkeeper Joe Wildsmith and Cameron Dawson, midfielder Jacob Butterfield and defender Morgan Fox took time out of their busy schedule to play a frame of snooker against each other. And just to make sure that they weren't there all day, they had former Welsh Open quarter-finalist Joel Walker as their wild card. We had a nice black that Joe, Joe um, sunk it off about four yeah. pockets, um, slightly lucky, but um, it went in. So that was a nice little eight points that we, that we got and that's got us into the lead. Brendan Moore, who will be refereeing this year's final, was there to keep the boys in check and was hoping not to hand out any red cards. I can't wait to start. I mean, it'll be my second final, obviously, in my hometown of Sheffield. It's a great feeling, so I can't wait for Sunday now. I bet. And uh, nothing quite compares to what we've got going on over here. Oh, Can no, you describe this... the sort of match that we've had so far? Yeah, this is much more exciting. I'd rather it's every day, referee yeah. this every day. I mean, you've got four of what I would consider, obviously, play for the team that I support, oh, which okay. is a great honour itself. <laughs> and considering all the talk about how many balls they're going to pot, all the thing I, only thing I would say is um, stick to football. OK, that's good advice. <laughs> <laughs> one, there we go, we've got oh, one. There we go, we got there in the end. Currently, you guys are beating the goalkeepers. Yeah. How does that make you feel? It's just normal, really. Oh, it's us, normal. Yeah. You're much better than them, aren't you? Really? It's fully really expected <laughs> when you've got Cam hitting balls. <laughs> Not even on his shot. Very tight this game. Um, and you were ahead, then they were ahead, and yeah, I think they're yeah, just they're ahead. They yeah, are so, four uh, at the moment. Always missed it. Always. He's not left it though. I don't think. <laughs> right, I've got to go and take this. Because um, your I've moment. Go. This, is, this is my <laughs> moment. <laughs> Well, it went down to the wire, and after nearly 20 minutes of snooker, it was Team Outfield who took the bragging rights, winning by a single point. Six under match, Outfield players. <laughs> I'd like a rematch. I thought we were a bit unlucky there. I think, I think Joe decided not to hit a ball when, uh, when they just needed the ping. It wasn't the best, so... <laughs> I'm just wondering when the transfer window's open, so I can change my partner, maybe, or... <laughs> Or if it gets someone else, I don't know. But no, I think the. Uh, Any word of congratulations to the nah, opposition, I think, I though? Think, yeah, oh, it, was a, it was a long Gotta frame. Got to be humble and, and defeat. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the better team did win, so uh, oh. congratulations to them.
wide and got big handles and there's a lady on top. She's doing something, I can't remember what it is. She hasn't got a snooker cue in her hand. It's very shiny and it's lovely to hold. Oof, shiny. It's got a lot of names on there, a lot of, a lot of good names. Oh, a cup, isn't it like a cup with a little handle? Oh, well, it is, with a, with a guy playing oh, billiards on the top. <laughs> big and silver and, oh, I, I don't know, shiny. Very, very big and shiny, huh? It's a big silver-coloured thing with the ears. It's the peak. It is the absolute peak of what you've done. It's got a lot of very, very famous names on it, and you're one of them. Just to get your name on that trophy once, that's what you want to do when you turn professional. That's what all the hours and all the years of practice went into. You're part of the history of the game that you love, the game that you've loved since you were a boy. The trophy is the statement you're world champion. It's just the emotional connection that each winner has with it once it's actually within their grasp. I think it's everything. It's, uh, it's got so much history. Every player would admit that this is the one. When you see it on, sitting on the, the, on the side of the actual snooker table, and you're, you're six foot away from it, you think, yeah, oof, that's, that's a lot. There's a lot in there. I remember holding it, I might have given it a kiss, and then I put it up to my mates, and my friends and family. That's a great moment. You know, the first thing you do, actually, when you pick the trophy up, you give it a big kiss, and then you, you look at all the great names that have gone before you. It probably means more when, almost in a weird way, when someone else lifts the trophy, and you think, you know, you're, you've got the trophy, but look at my name's there as well. I asked Dennis Taylor if he mind putting it in the boot of his car. <laughs> <laughs> After I just beat him, I mean, I didn't think about it, I didn't have a car, you see. Strangers used to come and knock on my mother's door to, because they could see the trophy on, on the, you know, through the, through the window on the front room and just come in and get a picture with it. I was absolutely petrified that I was going to lose it or get it stolen, so it stayed in the bank. Alex Higgins, when he, he won and uh, he was in tears and his, his wife came on with the baby and that, that was the one I, I remember the, the best. Yeah. It's, uh, it's our Dennis, I think, just uh, not quite wanting to grab it, but then uh, just kissing the top of it, fantastic. Joe Johnson the year after that when he was um, a relative unknown and for him to come and lift that trophy so unexpectedly. is really special. Ooh. Oh. History. It's pure history. It's great. I like it. Yeah. Come on, is this a real one? Is it? Tell me the truth. This is the actual trophy that all these guys have, uh, have won. I um, thought I was going to cry for a moment. <laughs> wow. 
Wow, look at that. <laughs> it is timeless, huh? and I <laughs> like it. <laughs> oh, it's crazy. It's remarkable. Look. It's for anyone any privilege just to hold it. Wow. Going for it all. <laughs> oh, shaking.